guys, what's going on? Thank you for joining on another episode of The Jade Around the Show. Today, I have the pleasure of having Magic in the studio. Her name is Jewel. Jewel from Oasis Coronation. And I tell you right now, she's Magic. What's going on, Jewel? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you for joining us. I really, really appreciate you coming out here all the way from Philadelphia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's like, oh yeah, I love that Jersey Turnpike. No, you don't. Nobody likes that Jersey Nobody Turnpike. Does. Nobody, Nobody likes does. the Philly Turnpikes are just not it for anybody. So I'm telling you, I'm telling you. How was the commute? Was was it okay? Was it too it was much? Fine. It was pretty straightforward. Middle of the day. Hi highway is highway. You highway know? is highway. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for taking care of all my needs down in the Philly area. Of course. You know, I know you came to me. Um, we met at a wedding. Yes, we a did. few A few years ago. Was it a few years ago? Like late last year, I want to say, it right? Was, I think it was late last year in right? September. It was a brown wedding. Mm -hmm. And then I came across you and your sister, Desiree. Gabby. Gabby. Yes. Desiree is your assistant. Yes. I am getting there. You're, it's okay. You're learning. You're I'm learning. learning. <laughs> Slowly and steadily, you know. But yeah, so you and Gabby, you guys were fantastic at that wedding. Thank you. You guys handled everything beautifully. And some of the things that you guys did, I was in awe because most of your planners don't really do that, you know. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. some of the things like picking up tables. Yeah. I mean, there were times where I'm at a venue, right? And there's a particular table that needs to be moved. Or something has to be done about it. Right. And instead of doing it themselves, they would go ask for permission. Right. Listen, as an event planner, you're it. You are it, the permission. Yeah. You are the permission. <laughs> it starts with you and ends with you, mm -hmm. right? So why would you need to go ask the major D or the right. other staff members? They don't care. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just do it yourself. Yep. I'm a strong believer in doing it yourself. Mm -hmm. And here I saw you guys doing it yourselves. And that's why I reached out. I said, I would love to work with you. And I'm glad I did. Yes. And we never looked back. Look we at us never now. looked back. He's always <laughs> looking forward, right? Yep. Always gotta look forward and 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 make sure that the future is bright. Working with you, it's gonna be fantastic. And also, our last site visit at the Hilton and Pence Landing. Yeah, you were there. That was a nice venue. That was super nice. That was a nice super venue. Super bougie. It, it, was, it was. It was. It was. It was well to do for the client that we have. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to mention their names right now, but they're out out of the country. Mm -hmm. They're enjoying their time. They're away. They're just got engaged yep. officially. Officially engaged. You saw the pictures? Yes, I did. Is they were so sweet. Yes, oh. yes, yes. So excited. I'm telling you, <laughs> I was in touch with them this whole time. And I'm the first thing, first question, how's the food? Because I want to know how the food is. I mean, I mean, you can't in, go out of the country and not ask about you're the food. In Italy. Let's just say it. She's yeah. in Italy. They're mm -hmm. in Italy. And the pictures, the wine, the pasta, All the bread. Uh, the bread. The bread. <laughs> I mean, come on, the bread. I was looking at all the bread. I'm like, and and listen, I have a sweet tooth, I have to say, and I have to watch what I eat because, you know, you got to look a certain way when you're on stage. And, you know, when you're in front of hundreds of people on a weekly basis, you have to look a certain way. You right. know, I feel like if you're, um, yeah, I've, I feel like there's more authority, you know, that's expected of a man at least oh you know? yeah a thousand when, percent you know because you have because it's like a doctor it's like a firefighter or a police officer you have a uniform mm -hmm. right if you're not in your uniform you're you're a regular joe schmo right and i talk about this all the time mm -hmm. but the moment they put on that uniform they're automatically an authority figure right right myself as a wedding planner and even as a dj and even as an MC, I wear my uniform, right. right? When I'm at the event, I'm dressed a certain way. I'm dressed down. Mm -hmm. I'm working. I'm doing a lot of labor, setting up. But once I wear my black suit, my white shirt, and my black tie, men in black all day, right? Yep. <laughs> it's like a transformation. You are, yep, you're clocked in at that point. Yeah, you're clocked in. It's you, You're in work mode. And people see that. Mm -hmm. You know, They go out of the way, and they ask you all these questions because they just automatically know that's the man in charge. Right. Because everything changes about you. The way I walk, the way I talk, everything just, it's like 180 off mm -hmm. the back. Yeah. What about you? Uh, the, does that happen to you guys? Like when you're on site, you, get, you guys get clocked in? I feel like, I mean, yes, but I feel like other people don't necessarily see it that way. Especially like just women in male dominated industries. Like people don't like to be told what to do from the start but as an event planner right isn't it more female dominated than it men? is more female dominated yeah. but they don't listen no, <laughs> because we're the women in charge <laughs> you know I, I i i have to tell you and i have to talk about this like as a south asian company mm -hmm. as an indian company and working with other event planning companies other female oriented event planning companies they don't get a lot of respect. Mm -mm, you know, not at the all. uncles and aunties, they're like, 
who are you? Why are you right. asking me to sit down? Who's who's this little girl who's yeah. telling us what to do? And 100%. you're like, I'm the person they paid to tell you what to do. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and I'm sure it's frustrating to them because they're not. No one's going to be listening to them. Right. I mean, it's difficult, right? I mm-hmm. mean, most Indian females are what, like five four, five five, mm-hmm. five yeah. six on a good day. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> With the heels, maybe. <laughs> With the heels, right? And then you're talking to an irate uncle. Or someone who's drinking a little bit too heavy in a cocktail right. outside, right? Mm-hmm. And they're all coming inside. The doors are open. Sit your ass down. <laughs> we got to get the show right. ready, right? Yep. And I've, I've been there. I've been in situations where um, as a host, as a host, mm-hmm. I would see these event planners try to take control of the room mm-hmm. and it doesn't work. Right. And I feel bad because now, listen, you're also on my time, mm-hmm. right? I need to follow the rules. I, I need to make sure that the food is ready. Right. The, that dinner is also being served at a certain time. So the formalities, which is an hour and a half, has mm-hmm. to be done properly, right? Because right. I don't want to rush. Yeah, exactly. You know? And I you have... don't want to rush the couple either, yeah, which 100%. is so important. So there's plenty of times where I would approach all these family and friends who are taking selfies with each other, mm-hmm. having conversations with each other, not listening to the poor event planners who are trying their very best yep. to be, you know, engaging without being overpowering. Exactly. You know, mm-hmm. and they're like, please guys sit down. No, yeah. we're not going to sit down. <laughs> I'm going to stand right here. What are you going to do? Yes, exactly. And, and then here I come. Hi, uncle. Hi, auntie. Listen, auntie, I love your shoes. Uncle, what are you drinking over there? Do me a favor. Have a seat. Mm-hmm. We're going to start the show in two minutes. Oh, Okay, okay Beta, right. no problem. And it happens all the time. So when I saw that as an MC, right, I saw there was a space that needed to be filled, mm-hmm. right? As a male oriented event planning company, mm-hmm. I want to say, right? Yeah. And honestly, listen, I've been in the game for a long time. I know what works and what doesn't work. Right. And I, when I walk into a room, I hate to toot my own horn, but toot, toot. <laughs> Okay. When I walk into a room, people understand that something's happening. Yes. They get quiet. Mm-hmm. There's plenty of times. I'll tell you a story. I was, I got changed. It was me and my little cousin, Jay. We're in the bathroom. We're getting changed. We're coming back into the banquet hall. Um, the staff is having their meeting, mm-hmm. right? Right before cocktail hour about their duties and responsibilities. They were talking. The, the people are having conversations. I walk into the room. It's quiet. Quiet. For like 15 seconds. Awkward quiet. Right. Right, and like this in, is an important person walking into the room. Who I'm is not this? saying I'm important, but it's 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 the aura, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like when you walk into a room, you need to own the room. Yeah, it's very it's a similar experience as like when you know we're setting up an event in the morning mm-hmm. and we're in like our setup clothes, you know, like a t-shirt, jeans, like our hair's a mess, yeah. and then before ceremony start or before any formalities start, you get changed, yeah. and you go into the bathroom looking like this crusty, sweaty individual, and you come <laughs> out looking like you're going to looking like, like you're ten exactly, mm-hmm. and like just you're right, the the entire vibe of the room changes when people realize oh she's here for business or he's here to like get stuff done Mm -hmm. um and it is a very interesting (laughs) a very interesting shift because you're like yes i was the nice person who was lighting all the candles like 15 minutes ago but now we are the taskmasters that are keeping taskmasters i like that yeah sometimes you have to be (laughs) yeah you gotta be you gotta be in charge you Mm -hmm. have to be in charge at all times you know there's a time to be nice and there's a time to be um, persuasive mm-hmm. with a little bit of aggression, uh, a little bit of aggression, just a tad. Yeah, I, I feel like people think that kindness and being nice are the same thing, no, and they're, they're not, not, not mm-hmm. at all. And so I feel like you have to approach everybody with kindness of like, listen, it is my way or the highway, but I'm going to tell you really nicely yeah. versus niceness, which is like, oh, I don't want to interrupt or I'm so sorry. Like, I don't mean to bother you. Like, no, I mean to bother you. That's why I'm talking to you. <laughs> and I mean to make a point. And that point is like, you need to move. You exactly. know what I mean? <laughs> like, they don't seem to understand that you're there for a reason, that yes. the bride and groom went out of the way. Because as a development planner, honestly, we as development planners, we are not a necessity. Right. We're not. We're not well, the I think more and more that's changing. You think so? I think so. A thousand percent. I feel like I can understand that. Mm-hmm. I can understand that, that we do have a role to play now mm-hmm. and a certain expectation. But I also feel like we are a luxury item. I don't, I think that's changing. I think that's changing because I feel like if you look at like the 50s to even like the early 2000s, you say 50s? I did say the 50s, the 1950s. (laughs) Now, was I around? No. But if you read the history, the 50s. (laughs) I thought I was old, but Jesus, you'll stop it. 
I'm old at heart, okay? <laughs> You're old soul. <laughs> exactly. Gotcha, gotcha. But if you look at like the trend in wedding planning, not just like how the expenses have changed, but just in the mentality around wedding planning. Mm -hmm. Back then, it was very like joyous and joy was the priority of like bride and groom will enjoy the entire planning process the wife is probably not working while she's planning these things yeah. and so you look at how society has changed from that point till now and people are not quitting their jobs to plan their wedding full time yeah. and they're not you know answering emails at one in the morning just to get them done they're Did doing they it because in they're the 50s? i mean well not that but you Telegrams? know what i mean <laughs> Pigeons? Said, not pigeons. She said pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pigeons. But you know what I mean? I feel like planners and coordinators, but especially coordinators, are becoming way more of a necessity than they used to be. 100%. Just because like you do not want to be the bride and be organizing your entire vendor team. You want to enjoy your event you instead of working be, your event. Yes, you want to be as present as possible because Lord willing, you're only getting married once and yeah, you right. should be able to enjoy the heck out of it. Yeah, not wondering like, oh, well, hey, the hors d'oeuvres are a little late. Like what's going on? Or, hey, where's my photographer? Haven't seen them in a few minutes. You don't want to be worried about any of those things. There's a space for it now, right? Exactly. So because it's becoming a necessity right now, I'm sure there's a certain ratio in the overall accounting mm -hmm. of the wedding budget, mm -hmm. right? Like what do you think that accounting is? Because I feel like Let's say your budget is a certain number. 60% of it has to go into your venue and your catering. Mm -hmm. And the other 40% goes into everything else. Mm -hmm. Your photo video, your DJ, your decor, mm -hmm. your Mendy, for example. Right. Um, and this is not even including your clothes and your jewelry. At right, this point, exactly. You know that's completely separate. Mm -hmm. that, that's more family oriented, I want to say. Yeah, I think like... Well, fun fact, my background is in finance. So uh, like numbers are very important I, to me. That's and like, you're here. <laughs> yes. And like budget is very important to me. And like those numbers are not just numbers that you say we would love to stay within here. It's like this is this is the number. Yeah. It either meets this number or it doesn't. Um, and I think what happens is people get really excited to be engaged. They get very excited to plan their wedding and mm -hmm. they just start booking people without looking at their budget first. And that's a big no-no. It's a huge problem because yeah. then you end up six months before your wedding day and you're like, I still have these three people to hire and I don't have the money to hire them. And but then what do you do? You go get a loan. Yep. You get a loan or you ask a friend to do it or a family friend or yep. a friend of a friend of a family member. And then it's like you cannot guarantee the service. Mm -hmm. You can't guarantee the what's the word I'm looking for? Like the professional excellence. Of, of yes. It. Yes, exactly. The, the standard that you can't you like guarantee the standard of that you know, service. I tell my clients all the time. Listen, if you're getting married, when you're getting married, it's not a birthday party. Mm -hmm. If you mess up in 2023, you could do another one in 2024. <laughs> right. It doesn't happen that way. Yep. You know, you're spending a next number on your wedding, mm -hmm. right? Hire professionals every single step of the way. Yes. Professional decor, professional photo video, mm -hmm. not weekend hobbyists. You know, no. hire a professional DJ company mm -hmm. who knows what they're doing, who exactly. knows how to play that role as a professional, mm -hmm. you know, creating your mixes. A, a, a curating a playlist you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. not just mixing on the weekends for a barbecue right exactly and if you're gonna pay somebody ten thousand dollars you right. want to make sure you're paying for like top-notch service communication 100%. professional you know capabilities just in general you know like there's so much to consider so i feel like people need to pick their priorities like mm. if your priority is your photos or your video hire those people first 100 find their style hire them first um if you have a very specific person that you want to work with for music or hair and makeup or anything like that like hire them first and then configure the rest of your budget around them because, and then, but also be willing to like bend a little bit when it yeah. comes to the other people that you hire after. Have after you that. seen, um, you do quite a few events in the South Asia community. I want to say, I do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the priorities change between different families? I or, have. Like, I feel like, um, if it's, a um, a Pakistani family, mm -hmm. their priority isn't the DJ. Mm -hmm. Their priority is going to be, the food and the clothing, mm -hmm. hundred mm -hmm. percent. If it's a Punjabi family, I feel like their priority is going to be the food and the music, right? Not so much the decor mm -hmm. or the photo video at the end of the day. You know what yes. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it all depends. So when I speak to my clients, first thing I ask them, "What's your priority?" Right. Yes. You know what's more important to you? Is it going to be your albums at the end of the day? Is it your 
highlight reels? Mm -hmm. Is it your decor? Is it your mund up? Or is it your dance floor? Right. Like what's important to you? Because that's your biggest focal point. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got to start somewhere. Yes. Yes. Right? And every couple is different. Like you said, every family is different. Even beyond like national origin, sometimes the immediate family is very quiet and reserved. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, well, we don't really care about being on the dance floor, but that food better be freaking delicious do you know what i mean I know and then mean. they have extended mean. family that's like we don't care about the food we just want to dance and so even just balancing the dynamics between the family members themselves it's like you know we do a lot more than just like create a timeline and make sure it happens we balance all of those things so that everybody gets a little bit of what you they know, want on the wedding day you just day. mentioned you do more than just create a timeline and enforce it right mm -hmm. so much more to actual event planning mm -hmm. and day of coordination right you need to be personable Yes. Which is huge. I mean, you can't be an authority figure without being personable. Mm -hmm. You can follow a guideline. You can follow an agenda. Anybody can. Right. It's not that difficult, right? Mm -hmm. And enforcing it, anybody can. It's not that difficult. But being able to enforce it with a smile on your face, mm -hmm. that's huge. <laughs> yes. That's, I, I feel like that's either going to break or make your event, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. once you're in charge with all the other vendors, you're talking to all the other vendors, you're, you're talking to your caterer, right. your photo video guy, you're talking to your DJ. With a smile on your face, yes. you know, not telling him what to do, but letting him know that his responsibility is going to be up in, let's say, five minutes, mm -hmm. 15 minutes. Are you ready to rock and roll? Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. Always be ahead of the game. Yes. And uh, I feel like vendor teams as well need to work together very well because I have just as a quick story, Gabby and I, my sister, uh, we were working this event at this farm that we love in, uh, like farm country PA farm and country PA. Yes. There's a very broad area. <laughs> you told me once you pass Buck County, mm -hmm. you're in Bucks a farm County. County. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. Yep. It's just farms until you hit like Harrisburg. <laughs> okay. Um, but we were at this wedding. And I had had trouble communicating with the entertainer, like the entertainment for the night mm -hmm. for a couple of months, like leading months? up to, yeah, months leading okay. up to this couple's wedding. I email had gotten communication, phone email, calls. phone, like I would get very, uh, just like short responses and I get it, you know, during wedding season, everybody's busy. So sometimes you're just answering the email to make sure it gets answered, sure. you know? So I wasn't thinking anything of it. And this DJ just thought he would take the reception under his own own prerogative, not considering the catering, the photo video team, not considering anybody else. And so we had a scheduled break for food service because it was a plated meal, mm -hmm. right? Which takes a little bit more time yeah. uh, for movement of logistics, switching plates from salad to entree, all of those things. Yeah. And he decided that he was just going to start speeches. And we were like, no, what are you doing? I start running into the barn because I can hear it from outside that he starts announcing these these speeches. The photo video team is outside with me. The caterer is like looking out the window like what's going on right now? Because yeah. we were just told we had 30 minutes to do this and we were going to do it. But now he's talking. So I start running into the barn. I make eye contact with this DJ. Excuse the evil eye. Oh yeah, he looked at me, he looked at Gabby and rolled his eyes and continued oh, announcing speeches. So the fo the photo video team had to like grab their cameras really quick. They missed like half of the first speech because he wanted oh, it was his show. And I feel like that is not that's a very easy way to get blacklisted. Was this a <laughs> Indian event or non-Indian? This was event? a non-Indian event. Okay. And so and I was like this is not this is not it. <laughs> the reason I ask that question delicately is because there's a lot of companies that I know of mm -hmm. personally who are in the South Asian industry, entertainment mm -hmm. companies, and I feel like they take it upon themselves to make the event about them as well. Right. right. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure a lot of people can agree with me on this one that sometimes the DJ and the MC, I mean, it's a tri-state area, right? Right. The DJs are very important mm -hmm. and the MCs are very important, right? Because... You have to be on top of your game over here, mm -hmm. plain and simple. You know, when we go out of the tri-state down to the Midwest, down south, and we even give half of an effort, mm -hmm. we're like rock stars over there. Right. And you come back up here. If you do the same job up, up here, like giving your half, you're going to be yesterday's news. Mm -hmm. so you got to be on mm -hmm. top of your game over here. So with that said, um, they take a lot of the responsibilities on their own shoulders, speeches, but 
you have to have some type of synergy with your vendors. Yes. I mean, the, mm-hmm. the success of the event is more important than the success of one person. Exactly. And the impact of a successful event goes way further than, oh, that DJ was really great. You yeah, know what I mean? 100%. And I feel like as a planner, that was is... Was that DJ any good though? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not at she all. She said, hell no. <laughs> you should have been able to guess that by now. <laughs> but like, I feel like Did as a planner, they didn't that? even notice. Oh. They were so in their own world, which is how it should be. Which is good. Yeah, you know, they the were just thing. loving every moment, which I was really happy about because okay. they didn't, they didn't notice. They didn't care, but I cared as the planner. Of course. And like as a planner, the only way somebody makes it onto my recommended vendors list is by me working with them personally and seeing how they communicate with the team and like seeing them in action. Because if you can't communicate over email, that's fine. You have time to make up for it on the actual wedding day. But if you don't make up for it on the wedding day by being a team player for not just your team, but for the entire event, you're not getting on my list. That's huge. I mean, the synergy between your vendors has to be there. Mm-hmm. You know, I always tell all my clients, let me get a list as a DJ, right? Mm-hmm. As an MC, I tell them, let me get a list of all your other vendors. Yep. And they always ask me, but Jay, why? Because I want to call them, introduce myself. Right. That's it. Mm-hmm. Just say, hey, what's going on? My name is Jay. I'm from so-and-so entertainment company. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be working with you guys on this day. Of, Should you need anything? Feel free to give me a call and let me right. know. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. It doesn't have to be a 30 minute phone call. It could even be a voicemail. (laughs) Because like when you get there on site, you guys are working as a team Mm -hmm. for the bride and groom. I mean, we're not there for our own individual purposes. Right. We're there because the bride and groom want us there. Yes. As a whole. They Mm -hmm. went out of their way to pick and choose all the different vendors from all the categories Mm -hmm. to bring together to create the perfect pizza pie. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So one topping is out of whack. The whole pie is out of whack. Yep. And some, some entertainers, some vendors don't really understand that, you know, mm-hmm. they don't understand that it's not your day, it's the bride and groom's day. And you need to step out of your own way and put them in the f- limelight. Like it's their day. Let's go out of our way for them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yes. All and I time. feel like part of a successful event is being able to like step off of your own pedestal for a second Mm -hmm. and let somebody else shine. And I feel like especially planners, that's what planners do. Like they do all the back end work to get everybody organized, make sure everybody's on the same page. So I should be running around the day of, I should just be like, you good. You need anything from me? If not, let's do it. You know what I mean? It should be like, you're showing up ready to roll. Um, but call me unless it's a problem. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And if I notice something, I'll say something, you know, like if you see something, say something, <laughs> <laughs> but like, it is so, so valuable to have someone keeping everybody on the same page, but then letting everybody shine. Because like you said, they, the couple wanted those people there. So I'm not trying to be the entertainment. I'm not trying to be the caterer. I'm not trying to be the photographer. Yeah. But what I am trying to be is the best planner to make sure that all of those other vendors can, they have what they need and they can do what they need to do for the Nicely couple. Nicely put. Now, you, would you be the first person that the client called to start planning the event? Or Sometimes. do you think they called like all the other vendors first and called you at the end to put it all together? Like, I what think do you prefer? I really prefer that people call me first. Okay. <laughs> Uh, mostly course. because like you said, it's a lot easier for me to keep tabs on like, Hey, I've worked with this, with this company before I've worked with this entertainment before I've worked with this floors before. And I can say like with my chest, like yeah. I believe in their work. I've seen them do it, you yeah. know? Um, but a lot of times what happens is people don't realize that they need a partial planner or a coordinator until they're too deep, <laughs> 100%. <laughs> you know? And then they're like, I cannot finish this all by myself. How on earth am I going to get married? Because I can't finish anything, yeah. you know? Uh, and they end up reaching out like, you know, six months to a year before their day, even if they had been planning before that, which 100%. is like, if we have the availability and our vibes match. Why not? You and know, you said the magic word is all about the vibes. Mm-hmm. There's a couple of clients who would call me to hire me as a planner, but we just didn't, mesh well right, right? Mm-hmm. there were different conversations my vibe is completely different mm-hmm. their expectations are completely different right and it's okay because i was told a long time ago i'm not for everybody yeah you know <laughs> I was told a long time ago. Why does that sound like someone said that to you in a salty way? No, no, no. It was in a good way because okay, because good. the thing is like, um, I have a big personality, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm not for everybody, right. you know. I'm for that one particular clientele or that one particular breed of person mm-hmm. that's gonna 
understand what's important to me. Yeah. And that's probably going to be the same thing that's important to them. Right. Right. Enjoying your day, not having the stress of anything, but also creating a lot of memories the proper way. Right. It's not a job. Right. Right. Some some DJs who've been around for a long time, some photographers, caterers, the core companies who've been around for a long time. I feel like they're all jaded. They're just going through the motions, mm-hmm. going through the motions. There's another wedding, another put your hands in the air, another, okay, pose this way, another four to six pillar, like a mundup, another buffet line, mm-hmm. right? It's the same old, same old. But it's not for the bride and groom, mm-hmm. 100%. It's not, it's, they, they haven't been there before, right? So I can understand that going into that conversation with the bride and groom. So if we vibe, if they're like, Jay, listen, it's our wedding and we don't know what to expect, but we want this, this, and this, bro, I got you covered. Right. But if you come at me and say, Jay, listen, this is my wedding. I want this. I want this. I want this. I want that. No exceptions. Listen, guys, get ready for a lot of disappointments. Yes. Because if you have those expectations right off the back, I'm sorry, but they won't be matched. Mm -hmm. They won't be met because you just don't know on a day of the event. You know, if you're not willing to bend a little bit and be flexible with your expectations, Mm -hmm. get ready for disappointments. Yes. You know, yes. And it happens quite, quite often, you know. Mm -hmm. So I try to educate all my clients right off the back. Listen, we'll we'll have a conversation. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about your event. We'll talk about how I can use my skill set and help you with your event planning, Mm -hmm. curating your vendor list, all that good stuff from Mm -hmm. A to Z. Should it work for you? And if you connect, we can move forward and talk about numbers and so forth and so on. Right. But if the first conversation is like, Jay, listen, I, I want, 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 want. Listen, good luck to you. Mm-hmm. I'm not the one for you. Because <laughs> because but, ha- but don't you think that like the wedding industry has kind of turned into couples having to fight like that? 100%. Yeah. It's almost like a reflex that they didn't know they needed. Yeah. And then they read like a Reddit forum and now they're like, oh, well, I just need to like tell them what I want and how much I want it for. And then that's how I get like a good vendor. And you're like, actually, it's the opposite. It's just the opposite way. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's just the opposite way. That's when you're rocking with, uh, with all volume at that point, right? Yeah. If you're doing 200 events a year. Congratulations, bro. You're so far out of the game, right? <laughs> but at this point, it's going to be cookie cutter because there's no way you can put your own, own personality into it, mm-hmm. you know? And those brides are going to, they probably won't have a lot of expectations, mm-hmm. you know? They just want to get the job done. Yeah. And I've been in those situations. Jay, I just want to get the job done. I just want the photographer to come in, take my pictures. They've been to so many weddings. Mm-hmm. They know about the, the first look. The, the, the family pictures before cocktails, right. the photo session after the ceremony, just get in and get out. Mm-hmm. And I want this to be over. Listen, if you want your wedding to be over, I don't think you should start in the first place. Yeah. Elope. Y- elope. Exactly. Save yes. that buck 50. Save that mm-hmm. 200K. You know Take what 10 of your closest friends and family members and go to Hawaii and elope. And splurge. That's, yep. Yeah. And, and really have a good time, right? Mm-hmm. You know... With the weddings being so expensive nowadays, mm-hmm. like I was saying, a buck fifty, two hundred k, quarter million dollars. My past wedding this past uh, weekend, I was talking to the event planner. Um, they expected the wedding to be at a quarter mil. Mm-hmm. It was over fifty k, mm-hmm. right? Because we had three separate days, right? Three separate venues, three separate of everything. Yeah, right. So it does add up. It adds up. Um, for the client who doesn't have three hundred k to play with. Mm-hmm. They have 50k to play with. Mm-hmm. If that, right? They have 25k to play with. What do you do about that particular client? I feel like that client gets lost. I feel like there's no one there to support them, and they're also one of very tall wedding. Mm-hmm. You know, I try my best to work with all my clients' respected budgets. I right. really do. They're coming to me as an option, mm-hmm. right? Because there's so many other people in my category. Right. As an entertainer, as a wedding planner, as whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm just mm-hmm. an option. So if they're coming to me for a particular reason, like, Jay, we saw you here. Right. We like <laughs> your work, but this is what we can afford. Mm-hmm. I will never say no. I don't care what mm-hmm. you're about to pay me. You can, you went out of your way. You went out of your way to come to me and say, Jay, we want you here because we saw you here, mm-hmm. but this is what I have to work with. I'm going to say absolutely. I am available and sure. Mm-hmm. It's not about the money. Yeah. You know, I, I, I feel like the whole money aspect of it, people get lost in that. And they think that's the only, yeah. I think that's the end game, but it's not. Mm-hmm. You have to look at the eyes. 
talking to a bride, talking to a groom. Yeah. The look on their face when you walk into a room where, where their dream wedding is a reality at that point, that is priceless. Yeah, it's true. And I feel like, I mean, I planned my own wedding for like $6,000. Good for you. <laughs> I mean, that was back in 2017. But still, we were like, Rob, my husband and I were so cheap. We were in college. I was like, look, I, I have this frugal, much. Frugal is the word. For cheap. Cheap. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I worked at a thrift store at the time. We were cheap. <laughs> and my parents ended up gifting us our dream photographer, who was a friend of ours. And uh, she had been photographing weddings for years at that point already. And I was like, that's the photographer I want. That was our wedding gift from my family. Nice. And we had our reception in a public park. I got my wedding dress for $60 on Poshmark. And we had a friend who catered. I'm and so that was jealous. it. It was like it was, and it turned out to be the most beautiful wedding that I could have ever dreamed of because that's what we wanted. We how wanted many, it to be. How lucky. many of your clients at the end of the day or during the ceremony, they say those words, I just wanted to get it over with. I've only had one person say that oh, to me. Wow. I've only had one person. And she didn't even really physically like say it, but you could just see in her demeanor that she was like, she was out. You know, yeah, her brain yeah. was not there. She was like excited and happy, but it was just like the social interaction was too much. You could tell that she wanted it to be different, yeah. but there was nothing anybody could do about that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And like, I feel like so bad, just so bad. <laughs> Cause if you don't want a wedding, don't have one. Don't have one. It's Elope. the pressure. Yeah. It's the pressure of your family. Well, then treat your family to a free vacation. 100%. Take them somewhere else. <laughs> 100%. 100%. You know, because you're not, you're not going to end up being happy. If your thing is like, I don't want to talk to 200 people in a day and you invite 150 people, you're still going to be really overwhelmed and 100%. you're not going to enjoy yourself, you know? Yeah. So spend the money where you would enjoy yourself. <laughs> I ask all my clients at the end of the day, even my own sisters, everyone's all married. I got them all married and I ask them, would you do it again? No, no, <laughs> absolutely not. I would save that money, go buy a house. Mm -hmm. I would do everything differently. Yeah. Um, would you still get married like publicly, like with your friends and family? Yes, we'll still do it, but completely differently. Mm -hmm. it, it wouldn't be 300 people. Right. It will be 40 to 50 people. Yep. It's okay if you don't want to invite the kids. Mm -hmm. They're not going to have a good time anyway. Right. They're going to be crying <laughs> in the background, right? Yep. It's okay if the elders aren't there because they're going to be sitting down and mm -hmm. not really doing a lot of work, right? Yeah. It's going to be looking at the clock i want to go home mm -hmm. right yeah i feel like the kids and the elders have the same mentality sometimes yes <laughs> they all time out yeah it's either dessert or coffee and mm -hmm. then they go home and the people that actually play a big role in your wedding are going to be your close friends and your close family mm -hmm. and just invite them right but i feel like it's so political yeah you know especially in the brown community i mean it's it politics all day long mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. they invite the parents would be like well we were invited to their kids wedding 20 years ago, I wasn't even born. <laughs> I literally didn't exist yet. Like, who cares? Right. Who are they? Mm -hmm. Do they know my name? Right. You know? <laughs> Do they remember me outside of a stroller? You know what's funny? It's funny. Um, a family member is getting married and, and he's marrying a non-South Asian person. Mm -hmm. So he asked everyone in the chat thread, Do you guys know the name of my fiance? Uh-oh. The one that responded got an invitation. <laughs> That's amazing. That's the funniest thing in the world. And they're like, uh, I don't know. Well, then you, you, I, I guess you're not coming. Yep, exactly. You know, and and that's the way it's supposed to be. Like, if you're if you don't know. Mm -hmm. My fiance's name, why are you even at my wedding? Right. You know what I'm saying? If mm -hmm. you don't know me, why are you even at my wedding? Yes, exactly. Distant relatives, politics, who cares about all that? Who cares? But it's still a common concern. It's still up in the air right now. Mm -hmm. where people still use that as an excuse, yeah. right? Like our own client, they had a guest count of 350 people. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I level set them about their budget. Yeah. And how much it's going to cost per person yep. to be at this event, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's just not like the caterer or the vendor per person. I mean, your overall number, right. which includes your decor, your photo, video, entertainment, that's a big that's, number yes. per person. Mm -hmm. And if that's not going to be there, if that number doesn't fit the number of guests that you have coming, what are you going to do? You have two options. Either cut, cut your guest list. count or increase your budget. Mm hmm it's mm -hmm. easier to say goodbye. Yes. That's exactly what they did. And share pictures later. And share pictures <laughs> later. You know, stream it. Yeah. Call yeah. 
day. Mm -hmm. Call it. Have a viewing party. A viewing party sounds like a great idea you know, if it saves you a hundred grand. Go to a VFW. <laughs> go to a VFW. It's five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Four hours. Yep. Okay. Set up a bunch of chairs. Put up a TV or two. A big screen. A yep. projection package. Two three hundred dollars. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so Stream much it. better. Stream it. Yep. Pizza and Taco Bell. Mm -hmm. What, $500? So, so they look at that twelve, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500 max. Right. For what? 300 people. Yep. Right. Out of UFW. Not even 300 people. Let's say 100 people out of UFW. Yeah. Right. I guarantee they're going to have the best time of their lives yeah. eating Taco Bell <laughs> mm -hmm. and pizza, watching your wedding on that screen. Enjoying themselves because you know they bought their own liquor. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and they don't need anybody else to serve it to them. Nope. They got a bottle per person over there. <laughs> they're chilling. They have the best time. They're like, "Cheers to you guys." Right. Right. We're gonna be right here in a different state, but mm -hmm. but they're having the best time, right? Yeah. You have to understand what's important, mm -hmm. right? Um, the overall experience is definitely important, but the overall experience also has a price tag. Yes. Yes. Exactly. And I feel like when you go into wedding planning with the mentality of like, I'm throwing the best party for other people. People, you always end up increasing your budget. And you're always disappointing. Yes, always. And you never enjoy yourself as much as you want to yeah. because you're worried about, well, what do other people think? What does that family think? I know my parents cared about what that family thinks. Have so you are not they met brown people before? Yeah. All we do is care about what other people think. <laughs> really? No. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Uh oh, they're looking at me for now. I wonder what they're thinking. Right? Yeah. It's, it's always the same thing. Mm -hmm. you know? You're we never going to know what people are yep. thinking. You're never. But what you are going to know a thousand percent and straight through the heart is whether you had fun or not. 100%. And so you plan the wedding for you and your immediate family and the people that you love and care about. And then you go have the best time of your life. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing because uh, nobody cares. No one cares, and that's the thing. No one gives a. Mm -hmm. You know, because at the end of the day, they're going to come there and celebrate you. You. Right? Exactly. They're going out of their way. No matter if it's at a five-star venue mm -hmm. or a backyard barbecue with bistro lights. Right. Yeah. I mean, personally, I mean, I know there's expectations, right? right. <laughs> my family has huge expectations for me. Mm -hmm. My, <clears throat> All my friends. Plus, you said you're the last wedding, right? You're the last wedding of the family? I would like to say that, but no. <laughs> you're like, we still got time. <laughs> yeah, we still got time. Um, I'm the oldest of four kids. Okay. Three little sisters. They all got married. Oh, wow. Right. So I got them all oh, married. Oh, so you're the only son. I'm the only son. Oh, I'm the oldest snap. son. Yeah. So there's expectations. Yeah. Right? And, and plus there's also, you know, I'm also in the wedding industry. Mm -hmm. So there's expectations there as well. Yeah. What's J. Ron Most that doing? you set yourself. Yeah. Because right? you know. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm going to get married in the backyard. Yeah. <laughs> Beach will I don't know. Right. <laughs> I'll say it real quick. Do it. Barbecue. I'm going to have a cookout. Yep. I got a pool party. That's it. Because it's a celebration of love. Mm -hmm. To me, a wedding is a celebration of love. Yes. And, and it's definitely very interesting when I see people spending their entire engagement period uh, only stressing about the wedding. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, yes, the wedding is very important. And yes, you should care about it because you're spending a lot of money. But you're only engaged once. Mm -hmm. And you're not just getting married. You're going to have a marriage, which is way more important than your wedding day. And yeah. so that's why I think like wedding planners, coordinators, people who are in charge on the wedding day are becoming more and more of a necessity because people need to prepare for marriage, not just the wedding day, 100%. not just the ceremony, not just the party that you throw. Because if you go in blind, that's what your engagement period is for, is to like learn how your fiance reacts when money becomes tight. Yeah. Because you're paying all these deposits to these vendors. Yeah. How does your fiance react when they have to cut somebody from their list? Right? Like all of those things, weddings bring out everything and everybody. The <laughs> devil is the money. Money mm -hmm. is the devil. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, they say that money brings But happiness. even family expectations. 100%. Uh, like even down to like, okay, what is our lifestyle going to look like if we spend X amount of money here mm -hmm. and then move into, right? Like there's so many things that come out of the woodwork while you're planning your wedding in that engagement period. Period, that people just ignore because they're planning and with their your wedding. finance background i'm sure that's something you educate your clients on a thousand percent don't you ever ever take out a loan <laughs> don't you do it <laughs> you know it's a big thing to take out loans right now yes i was at a bridal show and usually at bridal shows at the expos mm -hmm. you have your you know your vendors your right, right. vendors i was shocked to see a mortgage broker i saw a mortgage broker once yeah. i saw a um like personal loan yeah. person and yeah. i was like what are you doing here yeah. <laughs> what 
Think about that. Yeah. That's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. So now, who pays that back? So I was having this conversation with a few of my friends. <laughs> <laughs> so traditionally, the, the parents, right? Both sides of the moms and dads, right? They would chip in as much as they possibly can. Mm -hmm. Or the kids would do their best, and then the parents would chip in, blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. But then there's a time to take out a loan, right? Mm. Kids... You're getting married, you're 25, 27, 28. You know, you have a little bit of savings, mm -hmm. assuming, right? You have right. A, a decent credit score, assuming. But your parents, they've been more established. I'm sure they can get a better loan. So nine out of ten times, your parents are going to get the loan for you. Mm -hmm. So now after the wedding, who pays back the loan? Is it the mom and dad who pay back the loan? Is it your responsibility as a bride and groom? Like, what do you do? These are conversations that nobody wants to have right but you gotta have mm -hmm. and it causes so much of a rift yeah you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so in that case why even go down that road and get why do that in the first place yeah. because then you're not just dealing with your budget now you're dealing with your family's money yeah. like if your parents took out that loan for you you will never be able to like just chill out on your wedding day because the next thing you're going to be thinking about is, oh, when is that next loan payment due? Because now you owe your parents money, but your parents owe money to this company, but then you worked out a deal with your parents to like send them money every month, almost like a phone bill situation, you yeah. know? But now it's a huge amount of money that you owe a family member. And you're like, that's not going to do it. That's not going to make your wedding day better. Just so let's take it a step further. All the gifts you get. Mm. Right? That's for the bride and groom. Yep. Who gets that? Is it, <laughs> is it that for you to start your life? Because oh my you need gosh. like a nest egg to start your life. Or do you give that to your mom and dad or the person that got you the loan? I mean, if what it was me, I would just be, give, I'd just hand my parents the card box. I'd be yeah. like, thank you so much. Just give us the cards when you take out the money. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I would read all the sentiment. Right. Like, oh gosh, I would never be able to, to do that because it's like, you know, Getting a loan is not an easy thing either. Yeah, it's not like course. you can just go to the bank and take out, you know, a cashier's check or something like that. It's an intense process. And yeah. then their credit is on the line and they're now I would the just livelihood is on the line at yes, that point, right? Yes. For your wedding. Mm -hmm. So now if your <laughs> uh -oh. if your family got you the loan, if your parents got you the loan and you're paying off your loan to your mom and dad and your marriage doesn't work. Oh. You're paying off a divorce. You're paying no, off. technically, you're still paying off the marriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not bad, not bad. You're, you're, you're paying off the failed marriage. Whoa. And that's funny. So now, if you're paying off a failed marriage, who's sharing that cost? Is it the ex husband and ex wife? Or they're like, yo, I don't give a shit, man. That's your Right, parents. yeah, that's your problem. Oh, no. Right? Like, I can't even imagine yeah, that. There's so many things oh. you can actually think about, and it's it's unfortunate. Yeah. That's the word I want to use, right? When, when you come, when you talk about with like your wedding planning, the luxuries about it and like how big and flashy you want to go mm -hmm. people lose focus on you know it's going to cost you a pretty penny yeah you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and and the, the the value of a dollar is going you know it's called time value of money there you go mm -hmm. tell me more about that <laughs> I've, I've, obviously the, this this the, is the finance coming out now <laughs> <laughs> the more the more we wait around right it's 2023 i got a feeling by 2025 when the micro wedding is in full effect and the micro wedding is what like 75 people to like 100 people right what? micro weddings the, the those are considered like small elopement events micro weddings are like 30 people tops you know white people world sure <laughs> that's but true like that's people? true no oh, come on maybe 50 to be considered a micro wedding i, I think say, i'm okay. pretty sure it has to be like 50 or less okay yeah 50 people mm -hmm. i got 75 people in my family on my dad's side <laughs> That's a barbecue jewel. Right. You're like, that's just 4th of July. What are you talking about? No, that's like a Tuesday. <laughs> that's the Super Bowl night. That's all it right. is. That's all it is. 75 people on my dad's side. My wow. mom's side has 35 people. Oh my we have gosh. more than 100 people. That's just my immediate family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not even talking oh my about gosh. my friends. That's amazing. It is. I mean, you know what? I'm blessed. It's I, a good community to be around. It's a good support system. Mm -hmm. It really is, right? Yeah. I never had the need for friends because mm -hmm. I have my cousins and my sisters because we were all on the same age group. Yeah. You know, we were always together. Mm -hmm. We always had each other. It, it, it could be cultural festivals. It could be a night out at the movies. Right. It, it could yeah. be the clubs. You know, we we used to go to clubs <laughs> with, my I, with my sisters. Right. I'm not even kidding. We right. to, where are you going tonight? The club? All of us? Let's jump in the let's station wagon. 
<laughs> pick up the cousins from Paseca area, right. go straight into the city. That's so awesome. And go have a good time. <laughs> and it's just my family. And mm-hmm. it was the best thing, you know? Yeah. But micro weddings, I figured in 2019, the micro wedding would be in effect by 2025. Mm-hmm. I said this before and I'll always say it because my numbers, I kept track of all my numbers since 2001. Mm-hmm. I saw the pricing go up and down. And there was um, a guide to it. Mm-hmm. I saw the number of guests go up and down and fluctuate, but always led somewhere. Yes. And I forecast that by 2025, we're going to have micro weddings in the South Asian community mm-hmm. of 100 to 150 people. Mm-hmm. That's considered micro. Yeah. Because your average wedding is three to 400 people. Right. Five, 600 people, you know, because of families. Yep. Because of politics and all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. But COVID came into play. Oh, yeah. The right? ultimate monkey wrench. Right? I mean, you can't <laughs> even, you can't talk about anything in the events industry today without talking about COVID. Because mm-hmm. it caused a lot of changes. Yes. Good changes and bad changes, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, we're here talking on a podcast. It wasn't because of all the weddings I'm doing. Right. It's because of COVID. Yep. You know, the pivot. Mm-hmm. Talking about things, talk talking about things that most people don't want to talk about. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That's why we're here. I, I look at it as a blessing. I mean, it's a double edged sword. I Mm -hmm. mean, you know, a lot of family members, including myself, a lot of families out there, including my family, we lost family members Mm -hmm. to COVID. Yeah. And it's unfortunate. It sucks. Mm -hmm. It really does. You know, there's so many people out there, so much tragedy, but also in the same conversation, COVID changed a lot of lives in a good way. Yes. You know, um, families or event professionals that were so dependent on the events industry, they had to change their mindset mm-hmm. completely. And they're so much more successful now than they were before mm-hmm. because of their expectations, I want to say. Yeah. Did COVID affect you at all? It kind of did. And I say kind of because Oasis kind of started in 2018. Nice. So when by the time we hit 2020, I had only done maybe like... 20 maybe even 15 events a year at that point because it was very very new i was still like learning i was still gathering the information that i needed for like you know i've run businesses before but this is a wedding business this is a service-based business where i need to be on site i just need to adjust a little you know um and so by the time covid came it was a lot more of like okay well let's just Let's just adjust. Let's adapt and adjust. You know, blessed are the flexible for they shall never be broken. (laughs) (laughs) Where's that from? I had a youth pastor say that to me once. Wow. Yeah. And it's literally just ingrained in my mind because it's true. Say it again. Blessed are the flexible for they shall never be broken. I like that. That's good, right? That's t-shirt material right there. (laughs) I'm going to use it. I'm going to use that. That's going to be a bumper sticker somewhere. (laughs) (laughs) And so like I was just intent on being flexible like okay uh you know right hook over here let me just adjust and move over so the right hook can't touch me anymore you know and just like adjusting through the whole pandemic was something that was very very interesting to do Mm -hmm. um and so by the time we emerged out of the pandemic which is weird to say because we're still like kind of in it but not really anymore you know strain in china it's just like two days ago i saw listen it'll keep coming back i'm not even concerned anymore i'm like a lot of people are (laughs) you know what it's funny i was at the park just the other day and i was walking on a hike with my Casper, my dog, yep. and I see people walking around with masks on mm-hmm. till this day. And you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Is it back? Should I be worried? <laughs> right. What's happening Should here? Should I be panicking right now? Or... <laughs> <laughs> Is there another pivot happening? Right, exactly. <laughs> but like, I just, by the time we came out of the big, like, you know, show stopping part of the pandemic we had already had a plan in place for like all right if we have a a covid protocol what does that look like Mm -hmm. who replaces who what is the hierarchy level here of like what needs to happen and who needs to know first and so we came out of the pandemic with all of those plans so by the time we like hit the ground running in 2021 it wasn't even a question it was like okay this person got sick call that one they're in you know, almost 100%. like playing tag, like tag, 100%. you're in, get in. <laughs> COVID changed a lot of people's contracts. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. COVID, could the COVID clause. Yep. There were so many clauses that was kept on reinventing itself all mm-hmm. the time based on different customers. Mm-hmm. Well, and at this point, customers would go out of the way to be like, Jay, listen, we already left the deposit with an XYZ company. Mm-hmm. We lost that deposit because of COVID. Right. In your contract, we want to work with you, but we need this. Right. And you have to adjust. You mm-hmm. can't say, well, 
go F yourself. No, I'm not going right. to do that. You got to say, sure, whatever you want. Because you, you have to adjust to it, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My COVID clause was reinventing itself over and over and over yeah, again. Yeah, because COVID changed all the time. All the requirements changed yeah. all the time. And so there was one wedding that we had uh, for a friend of mine. She hired Oasis for her wedding. And they had uh, one person get super sick. And it was an immediate family member. And they pretty much had to like move the entire thing outside so that that family member could attend. And so it was a tented wedding. They went inside for dinner. That person had to sit like in a separate area. And it was like, you know, she asked me like, oh, is my, am I violating any sort of contract asking you to be around this person? And I was like, no, like, you know, we talked about this already. We already have this established. If I get sick, I, you know, I already have my back end process that'll take care of me that way. And my contract protects you and it protects me. And I feel like a lot of times the danger of adjusting per client is that you end up left hanging to dry most of the time in, in one way or another, you know what I mean? mean. Um, and like it gets really dangerous because then, you know, you get referred by somebody else and they're like, Oh, well this person said you gave it to them for $500 less. Why do I have to pay that now? Cause I know them too, you know? And you're like, well, you just cost five hundred dollars more. I don't know what to tell you. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Why is that though? I it's it's also my contract. It states that your pricing is strictly for you guys. Mm-hmm. This does not reflect any future pricing for your friends or your family, right? Because pricing is based on peak hours, mm-hmm. peak days, mm-hmm. and other factors in mind: yeah. holiday weekends, availability. Mm-hmm. There's so many different factors that go into play when you're giving pricing. Yeah, and plus your location. I mean. Uh, if I'm charging a client seventy five hundred dollars in Jersey, mm-hmm. well, they're ten minutes from my house. Right. <laughs> yep. I want to go back home, mm-hmm. take a nap, and go yeah. back, <laughs> and then go back. It's okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. But if you're like two hours away, listen, you're gonna pay an extra fifteen hundred dollars. Right. Because I'm gonna be staying on site mm-hmm. all day, plus the hotel stay. Right. And gas ain't cheap. No, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you say twenty five cents a gallon, man. Oh. Like four twenty five nowadays. Yeah, three seventy five is ridiculous. Mm-mm, you know, so I had much. a client. Um, I charged him a, a good number. It was it, it was off my brochure. Mm-hmm. All my numbers are pretty much um, there for my clients, mm-hmm. right? I don't leave any guessing games, right? Yeah, for my clients, I have a price list. It's like a menu. Mm-hmm. There's a service, the description, what's included, yep. and pricing. Mm-hmm. Simply pick and choose any and all options and get back to me with what you like. Right. And we'll work with your estimated budget. Mm-hmm. That's as far as it's going to go, right? So I had a client and their pricing, they wanted the bells and whistles, mm-hmm. right? They wanted everything. So the pricing came out to a certain number. But, but I have to charge like, you know... I'm driving bells and whistles money. <laughs> well, I'm driving four hours away to, oh, wow. to your event. Mm. I'm driving four hours away to your event, right? Mm-hmm. So I need to adjust for that cost, right? Yes. So I charge two dollars per mile. Mm-hmm. Okay. Coming and going. Because mm. I got round trip. Yeah. I gotta get back home. <laughs> Don't forget the round trip back you home. You mean you're not gonna move to our city? <laughs> So that also was a significant $3,500 on top of the... And the thing is, they're okay to pay for it. Mm -hmm. They're a little bit standoffish in the beginning, like, what the is this? Right, yeah. But listen, you have to understand what it's going to cost. There's a cost to do business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, me doing business, there's a cost for... I have my own overhead cost. Yeah. I'm not just waking up in the morning... And I'm making everything. I'm gonna give someone twenty five hundred dollars off today. Yeah, yeah <laughs> like, sure, why not? <laughs> right. And you understand? It's, it's, it's gonna cost me to make my way to your place, mm-hmm. work. I got my team. Yeah. I gotta pay my team's up. They're not volunteers. They're not volunteers. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't pick them up at the Home Depot. I, I hate to say it that way, <laughs> but they're professionals in their own realm. Yes. Right. And as a professional, they're paid accordingly. And mm-hmm. you know, I said this before, and I'll say it again. I pay my staff very well because mm-hmm. I have a high expectations for my staff. Right. You know, mm-hmm. that's it. I pay them above market rate. Yeah. Um, do I get paid above, above market rate? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And and I explain to my clients why. You know, the market rate is let's say. 12 to 14k mm-hmm. sure i get i charge an additional 25 on top mm-hmm. why and i talk about the value i talk yeah. about what you know what you're going to get at the end of the day mm-hmm. you're not getting a cookie cutter customer you're not going to get a cookie cutter entertainment company mm-hmm. or a cookie cutter events planning company we put our heart and soul into each and yeah. every event you mm-hmm. know 
We don't do 200 events a year. Right. And it's very interesting that you say that because I price almost opposite of you do. Like I have packages and what the package says, that's the price. Okay. I don't do like fluctuating pricing because I found in my experience and for Oasis that if I were to fluctuate, I couldn't keep any sort of consistency just in with my personality, with the service I was able to deliver. 100%. I couldn't measure like, okay, if I gave this person something for 1500 and I'm charging this one 2500 but I'm doing Doing all the same things like how can I make sure that the client is getting what they need and so for me it was almost an opposite experience where I yeah. was like look these are my prices if it's not in your budget I'm sorry but we're not a fit you know yeah. and like that has helped me really hone in on like what our process is for our clients and what we're able to offer each person uh, and customize it after they choose which package they really need you know so when you customize it afterwards the price doesn't yeah. increase no it doesn't okay. change so the price is the price I factor in all my overhead costs I factor in everything and so if I'm going to be coordinating your wedding, 2K, it's just 2K. The only time that changes is if you need to me need me to like rent a U-Haul or something, gotcha. <laughs> you know, to like transport all your stuff or if I need to drive an extra distance or anything like that, you know, uh, that wasn't anticipated before. And so that pricing stays that way. And then I get to really choose which clients I work with, which makes it a lot easier for me and Oasis and how they operate because we don't have to measure people's expectations. Yeah. We already know they are, they know our expectations and we know theirs and we're able to just like work together to make sure that that actually happens. So it's pretty much like there's ways to get to the same client service and like standard of excellence, but it varies per company, which standard is Standard of excellence. Yeah. Oh yeah. Standard of excellence is huge and efficiency. I I'm a can, big believer in being efficient. Listen, I my family makes fun of me so much. I'm like the family manager, you know? Yeah. I keep everybody on track and on time. And when I don't see efficient behavior, it <laughs> oh my gosh, it sends efficient me behavior. Yeah. It sends me into some sort of fury. <laughs> I just can't do it. And I cannot stand when I see other companies who are like, oh, I'm so special. I I get paid this much. I do so well i do x amount of events a year and they are so inefficient mm -hmm. and you're like what are you doing <laughs> how'd you get here right if you're not putting in the proper work as as being efficient right i see it all the time mm -hmm. that's because they're offering less mm -hmm. and they're they're not they're not meeting their own expectations i want to right. say you know? yeah because because you could meet your client's expectations but if they have but if their expectations are low to begin with, mm -hmm. then it's all good. Right. I mean, you 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 can only do do the bare minimum. Yeah. But with your level of excellence, your clients have expectations from you, mm -hmm. and they're usually a high standard. Yes. And you have to meet them every single step of the way. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it's it's a teamwork situation for vendors, sure, but especially for the planner and the couple because you will have to speak for them and ask things for them on their behalf mm -hmm. during the whole wedding weekend. You know, it's not just like a, okay, thank you so much for the timeline. Thank you so much for like all of your help, but like, we'll see you when we see you during the weekend. No, you are like the most present. You are the most forward, not just for the couple and their family, but for the entire vendor team, the venue, making sure everything's going the way that it needs to. And so those things are developed through communication Those with that client. Those are big shoes to fill. They are big shoes to fill, but they're very comfortable shoes when you do it right. <laughs> <laughs> they're a bunch of Jordans on your foot. Right. You, oh, you're good to go. <laughs> well, it's just like with a pair of Jordans that come with a price tag, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And expectations. Mm -hmm. Oasis also comes with a price tag and expectations. Yes. I had one person, uh, this is just burned into my memory, where she asked me to sharpen the pencil on my price. And I don't think I've ever been so offended in my Sharpen life. Sharpen the pencil. Sharpen on your my price. pencil on what the, the hell price. What does that mean? It means that she wanted some sort of discount or oh, whatever. Is that what it means? I think so. I don't know. It just means work better on that price. <laughs> can we sharpen the pencil okay. is, is the okay. phrasing that she used. And I was like, I get it. If you want to ask for a discount, just ask for a discount. Like I am the most straightforward person that I know, honestly. And like, if you want to ask for a discount, just say so. Just I had a client, um, go over my brochure one time mm -hmm. and they sent me, uh, a song, cut it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> See, that I, is awesome. <laughs> I lost my shit. And and I was laughing so hard. I called him up laughing. I said, you got it. <laughs> I said, that yours. was so unique. <laughs> That was perfect. And, oh and, my gosh. And that's the vibe. Yeah. Yeah. That is the vibe mm-hmm. that I always look for in all my clients. Yes. If you could offer that to me, I mm-hmm. could offer the same thing to you. The exactly. same quality, the same vibe, the same energy, because now we're going to have a memorable event. Yes. You know yes. what I'm saying? Exactly. And that makes it worth the discount. <laughs> 100%. Do you know what I mean? But if someone is just like, hey, I need a planner, but I don't want to pay for one, so cut your price, sharpen your pencil. And you're well, like, there's what? five other options. They're be my here. Guest. Yeah. Google somebody else because yeah. <laughs> I'm not the one. <laughs> so speaking of Google, um, I want to say that Google is huge in marketing, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With me, 90% of my clients are not from any type of marketing. Same. They're from, uh, I get word of mouth. Word of mouth. It's mm-hmm. our referral. That 10% mm-hmm. that comes to you from Google, mm-hmm. that comes to you from like pricing out like, like, like other vendors, mm-hmm. I'm going to call it 10 10 companies yeah. and find the best price. Mm-hmm. What do you do? What, what do you do about that? Cause I know what I do, but what do you do about that? I, I handle it. Like I handle everybody else where yeah. it's like, these are the prices. This, this is what we do. This is how we help people. If that's out of your budget, then that's okay. I have other resources that might work better for you. We have like a call it coffee with a coordinator where you can pay 60 bucks for an hour and ask all of your wedding planning questions. I like that. Coffee with yeah. A coordinator. Yeah. Just like, Grab coffee, you know, grab a drink, whatever. It can be in person or over Zoom. But if you can't afford it, that's okay. But don't like pretend like you can and then demand a discount because that's a very different attitude that you're approaching that conversation with, you know? And so we have like quite a few people that find us from either Instagram or like their friend tagged us in something. And I've never met them before, Mm -hmm. uh, but because their friend followed them or followed us you, you you're tracking with me here yeah. um they found oasis they reached out for their wedding and they're like listen i don't really know how much you cost i saw it on your website but like can you just explain to me what what you do and why it's worth the money um and that and is that's like, a good conversation to have. that's an incredible conversation because it's yeah. like you know they're not coming at it from the angle of you cost too much so tell me why you're worth it let me make sure that you're worth the the money or the experience Mm -hmm. it's way more so can you explain to me can you educate me on why you're pricing this way and can you educate me about why this price is different from this price if you're doing similar things yes because because clients don't know what they don't know Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. and that's exactly especially with weddings because you usually only plan one of them (laughs) there you go right and people usually like go online and they go on pinterest and they look at pictures and they look at all the reviews and and the Mm -hmm. testimonials yeah but you won't know what it is until you go through it Mm -hmm. right and exactly what you said coffee with the coordinator i love that Mm -hmm. um when i talk to my clients for those who ask me why my prices are so steep let's have a conversation Mm -hmm. and i'll talk about the value i bring to the event Mm -hmm. right and if that value is important to you, we can move forward. Right. But if not, then I'm not the one for you. Mm-hmm. There's other companies out there. Yeah. You know, and at and that no point, hard feelings yeah, either. 100%. Like no hard feelings at all. But if we're not a match, I would be doing you a disservice by sending you a contract. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. But I put the businessman hat on. I'm like, listen, I'm not the one for you, but you can hire me as a consultant. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I can the pivot. You. Yeah, that's a pivot. I could hire, I could direct you in the right ways. Mm-hmm. These guys are in your price range. Mm-hmm. They're gonna hit your expectations, so forth and so on. Yes. You know, I'm not gonna leave money on the table when you don't need to. Right. You know, that's just ludicrous at that point. <laughs> <laughs> that but I at think the same, so. but at the same time too, you wonder like there are lots of companies that. And the thing is, I, I, no, I'm gonna stop you. And things when you do that, like listen, I'm not the one for you, but I can recommend other people for a consultant fee. Mm-hmm. They want to hire you more. <laughs> it's true. Like, you know I what? have seen that. Maybe I can come up with that extra, extra just to get Jay on board because he's gonna right. go. He's doing all this extra work. Mm-hmm. I want him even more now. Yeah, it's reverse psychology and it works all the time. <laughs> it works all the time. <laughs> See, my thing is like. Compete, but don't compare. And 100%. I feel like business owners and entrepreneurs, we do that so 
much Mm -hmm. where we're like, okay, I want to get educated. I want to talk to somebody who knows more than me. Great. Right. But then it takes this toxic turn where you follow very similar people who do what you do or have been doing it for longer that you admire. And you're like, well, why am I not doing what they're doing? Why am I not doing the numbers that they're doing or the amount of weddings? How do they keep such good control of their staff? Right. You start self analyzing and self criticizing instead of like just compete, you know? Competition is healthy. most of the time always very healthy 100%. and it keeps you on your toes. And most of the time you don't even really realize that you're competing with yourself, not anybody else. hundred percent. And I said that to you earlier too, in the tri-state area, every vendor in the wedding industry is on top of their game. Yes. Yes. It's just the nature of this area yeah. where like people throw parties all the time. Every category <laughs> is saturated right? Mm-hmm. from decor to event planning to entertainment for mm-hmm. video. If you want to make any type of dent Mm -hmm. in this industry, in the tri-state area, have to be on top of your game. Yeah. And I am a firm believer in like you stay true to yourself and your company's brand and what you believe in and the business will come to you. I've seen so many, even just on the finance side of things, I've seen people spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on marketing and ads and expos as new businesses, right? Mm -hmm. Zero cash flow. And then they're like wondering why, why can't I get the client? And then they're bending over backwards to help the client, the one client that actually signed with them because of whatever marketing campaign they did. And it's like, look, turning away business for one person that might not be a good fit just means you opened the door for five people who are a good fit. 100%. Do you know what I mean? Like there's no rush. There's no uh, urgency to put yourself in a position that you will regret. You know not what I mean? For everybody. Yeah. There not is an, there's enough room for everybody to win. And so if you say no to one person, that's okay. Just have a Rolodex of people that you want to refer them to instead. 100%. If you're not available, you don't have to do two events in one day. You don't have to. So send them to somebody that you trust, that you know their reputation, and let them take it from there. You know what's funny? You mentioned that that um, there's plenty of business out there, right? Mm-hmm. I always say, listen, small fish got to eat too. Mm-hmm. It's true. It's so true. I have one friend of mine who's uh, also an entertainer, and he was like, look, there's room for everyone at the table. He was like, just pull up a chair. There's yeah. room for everyone at the table. And it's true. And when you approach it with that mentality, especially on the business owning side, it's no one loses in that in that respect. You know yeah, what I mean? I completely agree with you. Yeah, completely there's room for everybody. So it why are why are you getting salty with me if you're like if we know there's room for everybody? <laughs> I you know what it is. I think is first of all like your ego. Everyone's mm-hmm. ego plays a huge role in that, yeah. right? They want a bigger piece of the pie. Mm-hmm. But how much are you gonna eat if you if you can't handle it? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. if you want, let's say two three events a day. Mm-hmm. If you can't handle it, right? Some, what are you gonna do? Clone yourself? Yeah, and be at all and three. The thing is, those events are all gonna suffer now. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. If you're giving your first event 100 percent, as a planner, I only do one planning per day, mm-hmm. right? Per particular weekend. Right. I, I have a, I have a wedding on a weekend. I'm there. Mm-hmm. Me and my staff, we're gonna be there. I, right. I'm not gonna clone myself to go do another one mm-hmm. and go back and forth because I'm not, I, I'm not doing my client right by them, right? Mm-hmm. Giving a hundred percent. If I book two and I'm going to do 50, 50, no one's happy. Right. I'm not happy because I mm-hmm. didn't give you my all. Yep. You're not happy because you didn't get my all. So mm-hmm. we all suffer at the end of the day. Right. right. Yeah. So then what's the point? Mm-hmm. It's an ego thing. They just want more and more and more, but the more you get, you won't be able to handle all that on your plate. Mm-hmm. Just, just take what you can eat. I went to a Chinese buffet a few weeks ago. I had a meeting and there were signs and a buffet said, only take what you can eat. <laughs> yeah. Do not throw away food. Mm-hmm. And I talk about that because the same thing. Yeah. Only take events that you know you could give 100% in. Mm-hmm. What's the point of collecting, you know, that down payment or that deposit? If, Knowing that you're going to stretch yourself yes, paper thin. Yeah. Yes. And it mm-hmm. happens. And I guess people learn that over time, you know? Yeah, it definitely took me a hot minute to learn it for yeah. sure. I will say I am a trial by fire individual just my whole life. That's the type of person I've been where like people can tell me whatever they want, but I need to find out for myself. You, you know, go through it yourself. I Yes, I will literally throw myself on on the blade to learn the lesson. Do you know what I mean? Exactly and so mean. <laughs> like 
there was a time in early Oasis when we were still trying to figure out, like, I was trying to figure out how many people do I want to hire? What does the team look like? How many people should I have on site at any given time? And I was just taking whatever event would pay me money. I was like, look, I need the experience anyways. I don't mind. I'll give you a really good discount. I'll give you a good deal. I'll do whatever I need to do to get the experience to make the better decisions in the future. And it's a two-edged sword because that's good because I really did get a ton of different experience and my contract got longer and longer every single time. <laughs> Has to be bent itself, doesn't it? Yep. Yep. You know. But at the same time, I was stretching myself so thin that I wasn't mentally present for anything, for any of it. Yeah. And so now I'm able to have this system where, okay, I take a certain amount of weddings a year and that's it. All of our other inquiries go to our other lead coordinators that I personally trained that I would trust with my life. And of course I would trust them with a wedding. You know what I mean? And that's exactly what you mean. Yep. I do the same exact thing. Mm-hmm. And it's just so much better for you as the owner, for you as the planner. And for also the... your own mental health. Yes. Yes. That's, that's a whole other topic, but for <laughs> sure, like that's it's better episode. for, right. Exactly. <laughs> you got three days to record. <laughs> <laughs> We'll talk about mental health on the second one. Yes. Because it, it plays a big role huge in our role. industry. Mm-hmm. A huge role. I see a lot of people burn out overnight. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. And they're just, it's sad. Because mm-hmm. there's so much talent out there, right? Mm-hmm. So many so many talented people out there in all in all, all the respected skill set. Yeah. Right? But they take on so much that it affects them physically and mentally. Mm-hmm. And then they can't actually perform what the client pay them to do. And take and... it a step further from the clients. Mm-hmm. I mean, it affects their personal life at home. Yes. Yeah. I mean, there's countless divorces that That's I know so of true. because of the wedding industry. Mm. You know, I always talk about what impact I would give to the wedding industry, but we also need to figure out and talk about the impact the wedding industry has on us. Mm-hmm. You know, which is huge. Yeah. You know, but we're gonna wait for the second one on that one. That's our time. <laughs> you know, I, I know we can let talk. loose on the mental health. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk for for days. I know we can because you know what? You're magic. Thank you. I said Thank this before, and I'll tell you again. <laughs> Thank you for coming into our world. Looking forward to working with you on so many more projects. Oh, it's gonna be great. That's Oasis Coordination, guys. <laughs> Do you want to go into your tags? Or your sure. platforms, go for sure. it. Sure. You can follow us at Oasis Coordination on Instagram. I don't have a Facebook. Maybe I should have a Facebook. No. <laughs> Who uses no. Facebook? I use no. Facebook and I'm old. So it's for the older heads. Right. <laughs> it's for the older heads. And TikTok. OasisCoordination.com. Those are the two places you can find us. OasisCoordination.com. Thank you, Jewel. I really appreciate the conversation Thank you for today. having me. You definitely brought a smile to my face, brighten up this office as you okay. already do. Thank you. thank you for that. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you to my audience for joining us on, on another episode of the Jay Rana Show. I'll see you guys in a couple of days for the next one. Peace. See ya.